Manny Machado is the first player to start a count 0 and 1 because he didn't get back into the batter's box in time. Now, this is going to happen in April. There's going to be a lot of people trying to figure out what the clock. How can we figure this out? Because when you're watching the games, it's not going to be on TV, the clock. It's only going to be in the stadium. And the umps are going to have like a little watch to set the timer. 15 seconds for pitchers with the bases empty and 20 seconds with somebody on base. And they only get a maximum of two pickoffs. Mm-hmm. And so the that's... hitters have to be in the batter's box eight seconds on the pitch clock. And that's what happened with Manny Machado. So he learned, he was confused, and he said, what is happening? But that's what you get when you come out of a limo and you say, I'm opting out, right? When you get spring training, I guess, karma. Mm-hmm. But hey, listen, he'll be grand in Met uniform next year. I can't wait for that. <laughs> I can't wait for him to play third base and Brett Beatty in left field next year. But there's a lot of stuff going on with baseball, with the Mets and the Yankees. Both teams have very high expectations coming into the season. Of course, both teams have World Series aspirations, of course, when it comes to where they're supposed to be at this year. Of course, you saw what the Mets did. Take up the arm is out. Justin Verlander is in. Chris Bassett is out. Kodai Senga is in. And Kodai Senga threw 98 miles per hour today in a bullpen session. He's not even going to the baseball classic. He's sticking around for St. Lucie and he's going to stay with his teammates. And then, of course, Taiwan Walker's out. Jose Quintana is in. They added David Robertson to the bullpen. Raleigh from the Tampa Bay Rays, who's going to help them with the lefty, because that was an issue the Mets had last year. They didn't really have a lefty specialist yeah. last year. They had two left-handed pitchers on the roster. Joey Rodriguez was very, very funny when it came to his Twitter stuff when he was interviewed by things. But, of course, the Mets get James McKenna out. Omar Navarez is in. It sounds like Francisco Alvarez is going to stick down in AAA. They don't want him to be the DH. They want him to be fully prepared and ready to be the full-time catcher. But Brett Beatty's going to get an opportunity here at third base to take the job. It's going to be tough to get it from Eduardo Escobar. But Brett Beatty, he worked out a lot with Troy Tulowitzki in the offseason. He worked out on his defense and his glove. And then Tulowitzki said he needed improvement, and that's why he came. Tulo was one of the better defensive shortstops in the game of baseball during his time. Before all the injuries happened, the New York Mets have very high expectations. You have Edwin Diaz back, Brandon Nimmo's back, you have Alonzo's back. They didn't really change much in the lineup. It's essentially the same lineup as last year. They tried for Correa. It didn't work out. Instead, they're going to stick with what they have. Next year, I'm sure they're going to be in. Of course, it's already been reported they're going to be in on Shohei Otani. They're going to be in on Manny Machado. That was discussed when the Correa stuff was starting to drizzle out a little bit. They started saying to themselves, maybe we'll just go after Machado next year. But if Brett Beatty works out, what you could do is you could put Brett Beatty in left field next year, have Machado play third. Canada's a free agent next year. Scherzer can opt out. I don't think he's going to. I'd be surprised. It all depends on health with this team. We know Verlander's going to be healthy. He's never not been healthy. It was just when he had the Tommy John, but he's always been very nimble. He's always had a healthy career. He's never had injury issues for Lander. Welcome to the New York Mets, where that could all change very easily. Well, Scherzer's had a little bit of stuff with his oblique the last couple of seasons, but we'll see about Kodai Senga. You never know about the Japanese pitchers, but from everything we're hearing, it's been all good. I mean, he struck Pete Alonso out on the ghost fork ball the other day during batting practice, so he struck Alonso out. Alonso completely just whiffed at it with one arm. He had no idea. Alonso said that's why they call it a ghost pitch. Now everyone's going to try to throw the ghost fork ball. Pete Alonso's going to walk a bunch of times. Yeah. And then Edwin Diaz struck out Lindor on three pitches the other Hunting back. other pitchers that think they could throw a ghost fork ball. Well, Canada got hit with a pitch the other day. That's nothing new. <laughs> we'll see about the Mets this year. Listen, they have high expectations. Are they as good as the Braves and the Phillies? We'll see. I think they're one of the better teams in baseball. They had 103 wins last year. They didn't win the division. They clocked out at the end of the year last year. That series against Atlanta. They lost Marte. They couldn't beat the bad teams at the Cubs and the Nationals and the Pirates. They had a very tough time. And it dwindled out for them. Scherzer and DeGrom and Bassett were just a massive disappointment at the end of the season. We'll see if the changes are making anything different. I call this kind of a bridge year for the Mets in regards to seeing what they have. What do they have in Brett Beatty? What do they have in Mark Vientos? What do they have in Francisco Alvarez? And then in regards to the Yankees, the Yankees are kind of in the same situation. The Yankees brought Aaron Judge back. They brought in Carlos Rodon, but they really didn't do anything else other than that. They lost Chad Green in the bullpen. They didn't add anything to the bullpen, so they're relying on Clay Holmes this year again, and we know Holmes had injury issues last year. Their pitching staff is awesome. Of course, you gotta worry about the Cortez injury already. He's gonna be out for a while, and he's missing the baseball classic, and so he's gonna be out, I believe, for six weeks. But you're gonna have rotation this year of Cole, Rodon, Cortez... Severino, and then probably Herman with Frankie Montas being out for the year, which again, another disaster by Cashman in the trade pitching market. And of course, trading with an Oakland A's pitcher, it never works out. Cashman should stop doing it. So when I look at the Yankees right now, it's essentially the Yankees are bringing back the same team next year, other than Rodon. And Rodon's had injury issues. The Yankees are still going to be a very good team. Are they as good as the Astros? I don't think so. I think the Astros are still the class of the American League. The Astros got better with adding a Abreu. They brought back Michael Brantley as long as Brantley stays healthy. And it's crazy because everybody's like, oh no, they lost Verlander. What are they going to do? Well, Hunter Brown is one of the top prospects in baseball and it's going to take that rotation spot. 